today, uh, it's Diary. Hello, Diary. It's day five, and Clive's in the studio. <laughs> yes, I don't know what day this is. Um, I I was looking at my research notes. Um, and I did do a little bit of documentary on the last one, I think. Uh, I'm getting lost with all these um, diaries. And um, I'm just reading my, my notes there. Um, and it said that um, they were quite a heavy pigmented uh, paint. Which means that they were thick in, in texture. And and there was, there was lots of grain to it. So not unlike... Um, the materials I'm using, which is um, acrylics, and they're very thin and smooth, S smooth, <laughs> smooth. <laughs> I need to put a bit of texture in there. Now I can use um, different pastes and things, but I want to avoid actually using mediums like um, I don't know, they, they, like they, 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 you can get glass bead texture gel, and you can get pumice texture gel, and I thought, well, I want to try and uh, get away from that and try and do something myself and I'm running out of Prussian blue so I, I'm going to have to go and buy some Prussian blue I think uh, it says here that the original colour of the, the, the sky um, was um, had a lot of Prussian blue with proportions of lead white and a little vermilion vermilions are red but looking at my looking at my um, desk as you can see here my mixing station I got some Prussian blue out and it's quite a warm day today and what I've been doing is um, I got a little mister bottle just to stop my paint from drying on me because I don't want it to dry because I haven't got much Prussian blue left. And I've been playing around with this is chalk, powdered chalk, just calcium carbonate basically, just powdered chalk. Um, if you can't get hold of any chalk, go and buy some chalk sticks and put them through um, a grinder or a coffee grinder. Well, not so much a coffee grinder because you might mess up your coffee grind. Um, get them on a, a cheese grater or something like that and just just grind it down like that look see Molly Molly's in here so all I've done is just added a little bit of that to to my palette knife and I'm just gonna sprinkle that in with some paint like that let's put some more Prussian blue on there now that's gonna give the the, the effect of um <laughs> Oh, she's chasing cats and things. Anyway, I want to give it that rough roughness to it. <laughs> she's noisy. Um, so I've been playing around with this idea. I've done a, I've done a little sample on on my on my um, canvas. I don't know if you can hear. It's quite rough, and that's what I want. A lot of texture. So I'm going to continue mixing these colours. All I'm going to do is going to try and save them um, in my little pots and try and keep them for my painting. So she's barking again. Where did I put that? I got some um, extender. There we go. Some of that extender. Um, which I'm going to add to this Prussian blue because I haven't got a lot of Prussian blue left. So I'm going to do exactly what it says and extend my paint. So, rather than go and buy some, because I, I can't go driving around the countryside trying to find Prussian blue today, so I'm just going to mix up a batch and I mix it in. It's not going to colour shift. There we are. I just mix that in well. It should be fine. I can always add a little bit more chalk to it if I want to. The other thing I could add to that, and I'm going to do this with all my paints, is get some gloss glazing medium. There we are. That's that one there. And I, I, I can add a little bit of just a small amount of gloss to that. There we go. And again, that's just going to add to the paint. It's going to increase its volume. But instead of having a matte finish, it's going to have a gloss finish and Molly's just brought her ball into me she's gonna bark again now in a second 
So I'm just going to add a little bit more chalk, just a dip, dip into there. And, and there's no measurements for this. This is just what they say off the cuff. It's just trial and error, really. There we go. And I'm going to do that with all my other colours, I think. And I get that rough texture to it. And if I want to thicken this up, I can add a little bit of my thickening agent to thicken it up and make it look a bit more like a heavy bodied acrylic. Which, let me see if I can get a bit of that and I'll just show you what, what that does as well. I'm just wiping my palette knife off clean. I don't want to put too much of this on, so I'm going to put a little bit of that there. And then I'm just going to add that in to my paint, and that's going to thicken it up. To that type of consistency. There we go. Now that's got a nice... It's got a nice um, texture to it. It's, it looks like as if it's... Um, pigmented paint really you know uh, not pigmented paint but it looks like as if it's got a, a lot of big chunks of pigment in it and that's how I see the paint in my mind's eye so this is it this is all trial and error so I'm gonna put a little bit of that in where I got one in my wax pots somewhere where did I put my wax pots Wonderful things these wax pots they are. Yes, yeah, you get these from a fast food restaurant. And I'm gonna pick my paint up. And I'm gonna put my paint in that wax pot like that. I put that on my palette like that. And I spray it with a little bit of let me put it in camera shot, there we go. I spray it with a little bit of water. What I'll do, I'll put some wax paper over the top of this and I'll keep that moist with a lid on it and that should stay there for a number of weeks before it goes off. So um, that's what I'm going to be doing, I think, in this lesson. Um, I think I'll add some more onto the top back end of this now. I finished, I'm finished doing what I want to do, so I'm going to go through all my colours and do that. And then I'm going to start the painting, I think. Okay, so all I'm going to do in this particular stage is I've painted the trees in. Um, they took a little while. Um, and um, I'm just going over with uh, a glaze to glaze in some Prussian blue into the sky. I'm going to put some raw sienna down into the base and around the bottom of the dog. I'm building that up uh, in, in, in layers and layers and layers of glazes. Um, I've got the tone in the tree that I wanted. So the next stage is basically to bring those trees to life a bit. Um, so I've done the underpainting, just glazing over now, um, and, and that's it really. So this this stage is so boring because it's just a constant build up of glazes after glaze after glaze after glaze. So um, hopefully um, on the next part I should be able to add a little bit more detail in. So I'll just leave you um, a little bit longer with the glazing part and then we'll go straight into um, working a little bit more on the trees.
Hello, and I'm going to be doing a little bit of narration on this. As you can see, I've um, I previously painted this, and I and sometimes doing these type of paintings, it's easier to, to, to just do what you've got to do, and then sit back, have a bit of a reflection on it, and then and narrate over it. Um, Jason's doing a very similar thing as far as his diary is concerned, and I thought, I'm going to pinch that idea off you, Jason. I am. Um, so yeah, part of this painting, the, the elements of this painting is, is, is just going to take so long and a number of corrections that have got to be made as well. Um, like I'm doing behind uh, John Plampin's head. I decided I wanted to narrow that tree in that particular area. I'm going to be playing around with the sky. Um, if the painting looks quite dark, but um, the research I've done, as I've mentioned uh, uh, earlier, that um, on the rebate of the, of the frame it was quite blue um, because the light doesn't reach that part and, and therefore the painting hasn't faded don't forget this was painted in the 1700s so you know there's quite a long time for this paint to actually age and it's oil as well um, so i'm going to be playing around i'm going to be using a little bit of um, clive's interpretation on this painting as well i, I want to make it look old but fresh if that if that makes any sense um, I've mixed some um, chalk into my paint. I don't recommend you do that. Um, that is just uh, uh, me trying things out because I want the paint to crack. Um, we, we, we go out of our way sometimes to stop our paint from peeling and flaking and what I wanted to do is crack naturally rather than... Uh, I, there is ways I can get a crackle effect on a, on, on, a, um, on a canvas and I don't want to go down that road. I want the paint to actually crack itself. And by adding the chalk and making it brittle, um, I'm hoping that's going to happen. Now, with the layers of glazes that I'm going to be putting on the painting, along with several coats, coats of varnish, that should hold the painting and make it stable, I hope. <laughs> Otherwise, we'll end up with a jigsaw. <laughs> so I'm adding a little bit of Prussian blue. Uh, Prussian blue, vermilion and um, lead white was the main choice of Gainsborough as far as skies were concerned. And, and also into the jackets, uh, the jacket of the of John Plampin as well, and uh, that was um, glazed over with um, varying amounts of vermilion um, as well to give it that velvety finish, uh, which which I'm going to be moving on to. And um, this idea I pinched from Jason um, to narrate it after I painted it because the simple reason is there's so many elements to this painting, and this painting can go on for hours and hours and hours and hours. And I'm just selecting the parts that I need to, to show you. And it's a good way to concentrate because when, we, when we're making videos and we're talking all the time, it's not necessarily the concentration levels are not there. And when you're doing something like this uh, or a commission work, you just need to put your music on your, in your headphones and um, paint away. So I'm just checking my volume is recording. I actually just narrated this about um put that in front of my light my light I actually narrated this once and i forgot to press the start button on my sound <laughs> doesn't matter so i'm adding some highlights or mid-tone uh, effects to the tree trunk um if you've got the reference photo in front of you or you've seen the reference photo you'll see that there's quite a lot of light on the one side of that tree and also where the root structures are coming off the tree I mean, we need to concentrate on um building up the lights mid-tones and uh, and the darks to give that effect that uh, uh, there's a root coming out of that tree so that's important to to work on and again that's going to have several layers of paint to build that effect up um, most probably a glaze over it at the later stage i can't remember exactly what i've done so i am actually watching this as i'm narrating it with you um, but there is going to be a few corrections because and like everything else we all make mistakes and things don't look necessarily right when you're sitting so close and then you go back away from the subject and look at it even the following day sometimes you'll see like i'm doing you now that oh right i better i better correct that because i painted over that gap that's there between the the two trees and i didn't realize when i was when i was painting that's what i was doing um so it's always important that you look at your reference closely um, you don't have to copy it exactly it is this is not about doing a forgery <laughs> so you know it's not it doesn't have to be dead accurate it just has to represent 
that pinked in, which is all I'm trying to do. What I'm trying to get out of this is to develop my own skills and and to see if after going to the museum a few weeks ago and seeing the the masters paintings in there, I've seen Van Goghs, I've seen Monets, I've seen Rembrandts, um, and loads of others, and just trying to look at the brush strokes, look at the brush marks, look at, look at how did he use a thick brush or a thin brush? Um, was it put on in pastel style? I mean, thickly, or was it glazed? Or you know, you you're just looking at all these different aspects of a painting, not just subject. When you go when you go to a museum, if you if you're an artist, uh, like I, I obviously you, you're learning or, or you're a, a little bit more advanced or whatever your your skill level is. If you go to museums and galleries, don't just look at the subject and think that's a nice painting. Go up to it closely, especially if it's done by an old master and. And, and have a little have a little investigation and have a look at the brush marks and detail and you know how 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 do you how do you would think they went about it and there's a lot of there's there's a lot of um clues in paintings that how the artist actually painted it so that's important you you follow that Continuing to build a little bit into the sky, you can see I've just gone over with a with another layer of um, a Prussian blue. I'm trying to darken that layer, and Prussian blue is, it ages, it gets dark as it as it ages. Um, it gets quite dark, in actual fact. Uh, so I, I I I presume that the image I'm looking at um, has got a lot of um, smoke on it. I don't know if this particular painting has been restored. Um, but you can imagine these paintings have been hanging up and candlelight and smoke and you know and all this coal fires and all this type of stuff for hundreds of years and it's developed that dark dirty color so is this the true color that we can see before us I don't know is it my representation yes it is okay so I'm building up a little bit of dark now I, mean, I don't know if you notice I'm, I'm actually adding some shadows to these trees and um, that's a little bit of carbon black and a little bit of Prussian blue. It's um, basically, basically, it's like a Payne's grey, if you think about it. Blue and black. That's all it is. Ultramarine blue and um, and carbon black makes a good Payne's grey. Uh, but I'm using Prussian blue because Prussian blue is quite a dark blue anyway. A um, bit of ultramarine blue and a bit of black. Will 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 give you a dark blue, very similar to Prussian blue. If you haven't got any Prussian blue, so it, when we say Prussian blues and 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 cobalts and and um, uh, cerulean blues and you know as long as you've got a color, as long as you can mix a color closely to that shade, then you're all right. You know you don't have to go out rushing out and buying tubes and tubes and tubes of paint, and you're not going to use. So try mixing your own colors, and and if you're going to looking for a Pacific blue, try mixing. A Pacific blue and try playing around with different color mixes use a couple of different yellows and a couple of different blues and you can make a nice green using um, using white into blue so if you say you've got a Prussian blue add some white to it and see what lighter blue you can get from that um, add a touch of red in it and see what happens all these things you've got to play play with you know things some things are gonna work some things are not gonna work and um, I've made I've made loads of mud in my time, <laughs> but I mean it's trial and error really. And the best way to learn really is by doing. And if you if you don't do, and you just watch and 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 look at other things and use other people's techniques, then you're not going to find yourself. Uh, the, the important thing about uh, well, but the important thing I think of is when when you when you're trying to re replicate something is try and put a little bit of you in it. Try and try and do something. Try and show your own style. And the only way you can try your own style is try different things. So use a couple of techniques from one artist and a couple of techniques from another artist and see what works and what doesn't work. That's my advice. So I'm adding a few more highlights um, to the tree trunk now, as you can see, because the, the previous layer, believe it or not, is darkened up. And acrylics do dry two shades darker, so bear that in mind. I'm actually watching my monitor now as I'm, as I'm talking to you. So... It's important that you bear that in mind. 
so I can paint the light I can paint lighter and I know it's gonna fade away and if it doesn't darken as much as I want and then I'll put a glaze over it so I'm just working on these these light um, reflections now on the tree trying to replicate as close to it as I can and if it's if it's different then it doesn't matter I I, do, I don't worry about those type of things I just I just do and paint until I'm happy the most important thing you can think about when when you're doing any any type of painting or any artwork really is just as long as you are happy it doesn't really matter don't worry about what other people say and what other people think you'll have out of 100 people you'll have a percentage that will like it percentage that don't like it percentage that will try and advise you to do something different another percentage will tell you that you shouldn't have done this and you shouldn't have done that but at the end of the day it doesn't really matter as long as you are happy um and if you if you like criticism then take it with a pinch of salt that's what i would say take it with a pinch of salt and um, use the advice that you want to use and discard the stuff that you don't want and that way you will find your own way that's what i've always done being self-taught it's been a quite a difficult journey for me over the last 30 odd years to 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 learn and i'm still learning and these this is why i love these challenges with with um, with jason is because he, he challenges me and i test my own skills and um when I do my own commissions, it reflects in my work. My work has got a lot better. My own commission work has got a lot better by doing these things. And, 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 and I'm, by doing these things, I'm sharing them with you. And I'm hoping that, um, I'm hoping that's going to rub off, as they say. So looking at that tree, um, I put a few thick coats of paint on with, with the chalk in. You don't have to use chalk. You can use modeling paste or you can just paint it flat it doesn't really matter um you do you, you you interpret it your way this is what i'm trying to say get out of this painting what do you want to get out of this painting i've got a little bit of a thinner paint now and i'm putting some uh, light lines in just to replicate the uh, a branch that i missed and these things keep you're looking at this this picture so often and you you don't see it you don't see what you're looking at <laughs> you don't see what you're looking at you really don't so it's coming down to the wire now as far as this particular um, diary is concerned so thank you very much for watching and i hope that um, you've taken something away from what i've been waffling on about today and um, keep happy keep painting and um, paint away the stress of everyday life with myself in wales and um, all i can say is have a good one and i will see you on the next side on the next site, on the next diary. <laughs>